Okay, so we've got the radiator panel over here um, of the of the old Land Rover there, and as you can see, it's not in good condition. So, what we've done so far is um, we use the wire brush attachment over here on the angle grinder. Uh, various attachments. We've got the thin one here, thin wheel, and we've got the uh, umbrella type of one for doing. Uh, doing the surface this one's for getting into the corners internal corners and whatnot um, after I got rid of all the rust I then used a paint um, it's very abrasive paint stripper which also attaches to the angle grinder very good bit of piece of uh, equipment there so anyway then went on to the acid here the 45% uh, phosphoric acid scale X and painted it all over where the the, the most um, well painted it over the whole thing actually because it's all made out the whole thing's mild steel and it was quite in in uh, a dire need of uh, rust removing and rust converting well, that's what the acid does it converts the rust so after I've got the uh, the acid into all the areas where it needs to go I've scraped 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 and put a bit, bit more acid in there and I've, I've used the wire brush attachment there the umbrella one for the surfaces to get in here but unfortunately I can't quite get in to all the little cavities so what I've decided to do instead is to um, cut I'm going to cut all the way along here cut down there all the way across down across there I'm just going to, going to cut that whole place whole piece out like that um, and then replace it with some aluminium mesh after I put the mesh onto the back onto the rear side of the uh, radiator panel there what I'll do then is use the fiberglass body filler here <clears throat> just to pack out the difference sand it all down get it nice and level and then go back over with some body filler that will be, well it's easier said than done clearly, but that's the plan of attack and that's what I will be doing over the next few hours this afternoon. So I am going to take um, a little diary as the progress goes on so we can have a look and you can um, obviously make your positive or negative comments or, or what not. Right, we shall see. I'm going to first of all get on with the, the cutting of this little bit here. Um, get rid of that and then I'll be able to see a bit clearer whether there's further rust down this little bit here. Okay, so we've got the part 
still quite hot actually. So we've we'll cut this part off. And then we'll make up the missing part with the aluminium mesh here. Very good stuff, very malleable, fairly rigid, rigid enough anyway to hold whilst the uh, fiberglass filler goes hard. So I'll just shape this now into some form of uh, channel section, stick it around the back of the panel all the way along and then just uh, use the, the fiberglass filler to uh, as an adhesive and as a, a packer as well or a filler um, and then just sand it sand it all down after it dries it only takes 10-15 minutes to to, um, to go off before it's ready to sand so I'll get some uh, 60 grit sandpaper ready on a sanding block um, whilst the fiberglass is going off Right, so I've got the the mesh is pretty much ready to uh, stick on with the fiberglass. Before we do that, though, what I'm going to do is use some edge primer on the back. Uh, oh, this stuff here, edge primer. Stick it directly onto uh, bare metal before going over with your high build primer, which you'd then be sanding down to prepare for painting. Um, you know, once you've used the filler and whatnot. So if there's any bare metal it's visible use this first before you put any filler down anything so i'm going to take this off the mesh um, and then use the edge primer on the inside before um, going ahead with the fiberglass filler which is going to be to strip all the paint off uh, the rest of the casing there. So as you can see, we've got the two coats of hammerite on the inside. It doesn't have to be very pretty that, at all because it's not going to be seen. It's just more of a, a deterrent for any uh, future rust, if anything else. 
just to make it look a little bit better um, as I say it's not the prettiest but at least it will stick and it's all the same color it's the outside that's the most important to uh, to have looking nice so we've got all, all the fiberglass in here that's all rock hard it's all solid um, now what we need to do is go through I'm just going to go through a variety of different types of uh, abrasive pads just to strip down all the paint off there now there's obviously over the years it's had uh, quite a few coats of paint I've taken one or two coats off but uh, I'm frightened that I'm frightened not to uh, disturb any of the metal really so I don't want to use anything too abrasive like the the wire uh, the wire brush there um, I will continue to have a go with this little thing here this little it's a relatively recent um, piece of piece of equipment uh, it's, it's mainly designed to strip the paint off materials but it doesn't last very long so and it's rather expensive as well I think that was I think that was about 10 or 11 pound and it probably lasted about 20 minutes before it's taken the the sharp corner off there and it's, it's developed quite a, um, a sharp a steep chamfer as you can see so I'm going to try just using the sanding attachment which goes onto the angle grinder um, just whacking a 60 grit uh, bit of paper on there I'm also going to have a go with the um, the sanding the flap pads or whatever they're called have a go with that it might be a bit too abrasive that it's, it says it's for metal so it'll probably it might just take off too much metal it is it is obviously very abrasive that's it at 60 um, using this one is a bit more forgiving because of the nature of the rubber um, pad which will be sort of underneath the sandpaper as it spins around on the hand grinder so we'll set this one up first of all see how it gets on and if it, if it is too slow going then I'll swap it for the, uh, the, the, the flat pad or whatever you call it um, yeah so I'll, I'll have a go at doing that now set it all up and we shall see this part here where it's all fiberglassed what we need to do with this one is just get a, uh, a sanding block underneath this uh, 60 grit paper there so, so we can ensure that that stays as flat as possible at the moment it's very bumpy and uneven we need to get it flat so it doesn't look like you've just whacked a load of filler or fiberglass in there So the conclusion is that the um, the rust strip or the strip rust disc, is what it's called, um, actually proved to be the better option of the three or four alternatives. So the wire brush was too far too abrasive; it was leaving too many scratches, really deep scratches in the surface of the metal work. Um, the flat disc here again far too abrasive leaving lots and lots of scratches all over because of all the um the, the grit in the surface of the, the pad there um then i used just a piece of sandpaper p60 it's a special piece for design to go on this rubber pad which then attaches to the angle grinder um give me the same problems really it's just leaving too many scratches just the same as what uh, the flat disc was doing i used a more worn uh, version of the flat disc I've had this one for a couple of years I used that and it was okay uh, didn't leave too many scratches but obviously the outside where it is warm and um, wasn't really cutting any any of the paint off so uh, I reverted back to the abrasive pad um, the rust remover it's a uh, it's a universal fitness one so it will go on no small angle grinders but it is fantastic and it didn't really wear down as much as I thought it would have done I used it for probably 70% of the surface um, it's great for flat surfaces but it will wear down more when you're getting inside of the little uh, the edges as soon as it catches as soon as the edge of the wheel here catches on one of the edges of the uh, nav so it will chip away at the material and that's when it starts to uh, degrade somewhat and, and, and uh, shrink basically so I've done all around the edge of this anyway all around the outside all around the front um, I just need to level this up a bit more 
and then I'm going to cover the whole thing in Expander. Expand the whole thing, just keep the um, keep the surface rust at bay, and uh, then I can start to fill. So X prime and next, and then on with the filling. So I am just going to mix a load of filler now, a load of body filler, just normal, regular, easy sand body filler, and just like with the fiberglass, it is a P. Uh, size to a golf ball, it's a nice big dollop. I'll be filler there along with a tiny little bit, fill in a little tiny bit more for good luck, just in case. So, just like with the, with the fiberglass filler, you just you don't mix it as such, you don't stir it, you squeeze it like this. So you get a dollop, twist it up, squeeze it down, that way you do not add any air into the mixture. Let's make sure you get it all mixed in, like so. Keep it nice and neat, as neat as you possibly can any, anyway. And then just take little bits, small bits at a time, add them on. Carefully. Fortunately, on the bottom of the radiator panel here, I have the uh, the two sides here, one and two, to as a guide really, more than anything else. Although they aren't brilliant, try not to go a bit too many times because you might disturb and create some air bubbles or air pockets within the filler. So. Best to give it several little, several light coats really, because you put too much filler on, it's going to take you a lot longer to sand it all down to the right level. So it's best if you build it up in stages. And what I'm going to do with it is I'm just going over this obvious bit at the bottom here, and then I'm going to go over the complete surface area, well most of it anyway, of the rest of the radiator panel because there are quite a few scratches in it and whilst I've got all the paint off may as well go over and do a nicer, a nicer finish as you possibly can. over the complete area like that and then go back and get any little loose bits you'll find it's very therapeutic working with this stuff as long as you can move it maneuver it all before it starts to go tacky right Try not to get any major high spots with it as well. Alright, now with this little tiny bit of what left, I am just going to give a very light coverage over the rest of the panel. Don't want to give yourself too much work. The more filler you put on, the more sanding you're going to have to do. I'll get another mix on, do the rest. And then you can have a look at when it's done.